Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Artistic director Amy Seiward has been named one of 25 to watch in a dance magazine. That's a national publication. And her choreography named one of the top 10 dance events. She has worked with dancers from New York City Ballet and was mentored by the best in the business. And now she is back with the seventh annual sketch series and here to tell us all about it. Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. All right. So your new work is entitled Wandering. Yes. Tell me about this. Well, this will be my first full evening length work. I normally do short ballets. They're called repertory ballets. I do a lot of them here uh, with Smeon Ballet. Um, and those pieces tend to be about 20, 25 minutes long. And I've never had the opportunity to do a full length work. Um, so I made one. <laughs> and, um, and we're working on that right now. We're about three quarters done and we premiere uh, two weeks from tomorrow so it's a little bit of a stress time to get everything done yeah it's a slam time it is it is it's I, intense but it's also wonderful so wandering what's what's behind that so if the music is Franz Schubert uh, it's a uh, winter Risa, which translates into a winter's journey and what it has to do with is a little bit of a it's it's been described as like a Beckett play it's the dark night of the soul it's at uh, this uh, protagonist ha is loses his love and then wanders through 24 poems of loss, existential, like what's the point type of, you know, wandering for, you know, these poems are a couple hundred years old and they've kind of been described as every teenage angst song you've ever heard lately. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we can all kind of, uh, yeah, we can all relate. We can all relate. And I think what's interesting is if you, you, you hear the saying, you never love the same way twice. Mm -hmm. um, I think you also never get your heart broken the same way twice. So we've been trying to explore different themes of loss, of lost love, whether um, of, of, of losing someone um, through death, of losing a sense of home, of sense of place, sure. of um, feeling completely unmoored and disconnected um, from those around you. Well, we are very lucky we, we, because we have some video of your work. Yes, so great. Let's, let's I haven't take seen a look. it yet. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. The music is beautiful, too. Oh, this music is stunning. The more I hear it, the more I fall in love with it. This, um, this specific uh, song right here is uh, about an organ grinder who's singing his songs, and you can hear it, and it's just a piano and voice, but you get this mechanical pool each time that the song's going. And these two dancers, this is uh, James Gilmore and uh, Tina LaForgia, and they're just absolutely stunning. Um, James has been dancing for me for years. This is Tina's first time out here. And um, there's so much emotion in yeah, the dance. Yeah, they're just, yeah, they're yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So tell me about your company. How did you get first get it started? Um, I started it. It, it developed very organically. We incorporated back in 2011, but even before then, I was um, just kind of grabbing my friends, and uh, it's like, hey, we're, you know, uh, dancers are usually laid off during the summer. And so during the summer, we would come together and uh, I'd create on my friends. And then we'd do shows through different platforms locally. And that really developed into a company. And, um, you know, now we've got eight paid employees and all sorts of, you know, official nonprofit 501c3 status and a board of directors and all, all sorts of stuff. Well, congratulations <laughs> on that. So we were watching that video and you mentioned that one of the dancers, this is her first time dancing, yes. dancing with you. Is that exciting to see somebody come on uh, into the company for the first time? Yeah, and everyone in the company, I know them, I've worked with them somewhere else. So I have worked with her one time before um, through Cincinnati Ballet. Um, and when I bring in dancers uh, into this mix, they're all beautiful dancers, but they're also really generous artists. So the creative process, you know, it's like in intensely vulnerable. Sure. And when you're sitting there like, I, okay, I need to make a 70 minute ballet and you're, you're stepping into this unknown, you need artists who are willing to step in there with you and who are going to be generous collaborators. And um, that, that's what these guys are picked for. Um, I had a, 
you know, a rough choreographic day last week, which would be the equivalent of having writer's block. Mm -hmm. And these guys, they, they, you know, there's eight dancers and they were just there with me the whole time. Every bad idea they had, they were like, sure, well, yeah, we'll try that. Okay, you don't like that one? We'll try this. They never once crossed their arms and, you know, and said, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 which, fair enough, they could have done. But um, I think when you're creating with um, collaborators, just to have people who are sure. open and supportive and I trust them, they trust me. Well, you do beautiful work. Thank so you. thank you so much for coming on the show and My telling pleasure. us about it. And good luck with the performances. And hurry and get your tickets to Amy's performance at asimagery.org. Coming up next, a social media expert.